They need to be purchased uh, by the church office this Tuesday. They will be for sale following this morning's service. Uh, Shirley and uh, Debbie Horn have tickets for sale, so see either Shirley in the church office or see Debbie Horn, and they will be happy to give you a ticket to this wonderful event uh, for ladies of our area. Uh, so please uh, be aware of that. So this is uh, the Janet Pope Conference next Saturday. The cost of the tickets is $10, uh, and that includes lunch. So please be aware of that uh, if you'd like to attend. Invite some friends, but please get those tickets for sure by Tuesday so they can have a head count for the lunch. Is that correct? All right. Uh, also, just uh, if you are a parent uh, of a student, uh, we have Disciple Now coming up January 29th. Please sign up because we need to know about who's coming so we can make uh, preparations for host homes, we can make preparations for food, we can make those pre preparations nece necessary. Uh, the 31st, uh, we, uh, we will be hosting uh, the last day of that, so we'll have uh, our speaker and our band here. We'll also have uh, the other churches that is involved with our association here as well. They'll be here for the breakfast that Sunday morning. They'll be here for worship that Sunday morning. So if some student is sitting in y'all's seats, I'm sorry. But we're going to have a mass pile of them, I promise you that. So uh, please be aware of that. Please be, pre be prepared. And y'all come on, and we'll, be, uh, we'll get together in fellowship and uh, worship the Lord together. We have a quick video that we're going to show uh, about Janet Pope, and uh, go ahead and play that now. People ask me, what people is ask me, what is the greatest benefit of memorizing Well, there are so well, many benefits, are so but, I many benefits that the but I would say that the greatest is benefit is to know God, is to and, know to God and to walk closely. With closely with if you him. think about the greatest, if you think about the greatest love commandment, God with all love your heart, God, soul, with all your heart, soul, but, soul, but how do we love God? But how do we love God if we don't know Him? And if our knowledge of and if our knowledge of God is shallow, can our love be deep? Can our love be deep? This is what I have discovered. This is what I have discovered. Years through, through many God's years word. of memorizing God's that word, that to know Him is that to, to love know Him, him is to and love to know Him greatly, and to know Him is greatly, him greatly is to love Him greatly. People tell me I wish people I tell me God I wish I knew do. God the way you. But do. I say how is it? But that I say God how is it that devised God for us to devised know him? for us to know He gave us His word. He gave us that His word. That is the place where that God is chose the place where God chose to reveal Himself. So I would say that would be the so I would say that would be the greatest to know God is just to know God and to walk. With him closely. Another benefit. Another benefit is transformed. Is transformed thinking. thinking. When God's when word is continually, God's on, your continually on your mind lips. and on your lips. It begins to transform. It begins your to mind. transform your mind. A lot of situations. A lot that of situations every that day we face are every not day. in the Bible. Are you not in the Bible. Bible. You can't open the Bible and look for, for, for every single verse, situation. For every have. single situation. And so. And so it's not that God intentionally it's not left that God things intentionally out. Left what he things wanted out. is for what us he to be wanted so saturated in to be so his word saturated that we in begin his word, to think that we begin to think biblically. and so when a situation so arises, when a situation we can arises, we can through process a grid that we have, a grid that we have, so much scripture that's so already. So that's, in that's, so that's what I would say. So that's what I would say is another. And then for me personally, and then for me personally, memorizing God's word, memorizing God's word helps me to get out of myself because. Because my default my mode is default self -absorption. self absorption is I, I wake up in the morning. I, I think about I wake me. up in the morning. I think and then I go to me. bed at night. And I'm thinking. And then I go to bed at night. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do in my family, and my friends, and my job. I have to do. And what I have to do. Memorizing God's word. And memorizing God's word. Throughout the day, I can throughout the day I can come back to God and commune with Him and get His thoughts and think about Him. And that gives perspective. And that gives perspective. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time. I'm now in the second half and I don't want. And I don't want to spend, time, want to spend about time thinking about my bucket list or my, my bucket list or my list of things to do. I want to think things about to do. I want to think about what does God want me to do. What does God want me to do? And that helps me. And that helps me by memorizing scripture to run back to God's word throughout. Okay, so I would say that. Okay, so I would say that the greatest three of the greatest benefits. First of all, to know God. First of all, to know God and to walk close. Secondly. Secondly, transform to be able to think to be able to think through and process, process, process things through a biblical, and biblical and then lastly, grid. And then lastly, to help me escape from to help me escape from being self-absorbed.
Good morning. It's a joy to see you. Would you please stand? Find somebody to tell them how glad you are to see them in God's house.
Good morning. It is good to see each and every one of you and uh, good to be back. I appreciate your prayers and uh, uh, allowing me to go. We uh, I got home last night about 1 a.m., something like that, after uh, about 29 hours of airplanes and airports and that kind of thing. So if I nod off in the middle of my sermon, like some of you do sometimes, <laughs> I'll forgive you if you forgive me. How about that? But it's a, it's a joy to be here. Um, as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for the Helen Anderson family. Uh, she was buried Friday. And uh, Joan uh, is here, and uh, we've been praying for that family and, and uh, continue to, to remember them as we pray this morning. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you for uh, the joy that you've given us in Jesus. Uh, everywhere we go and everything we do, you walk right there with us, Lord, uh, providing for us and taking care of us. And, Father, I'm thankful this morning that you've done just that. You've paid the path for us to be in this place this morning, dear God. Lord, whatever we bring into this place, whether it be a, um, a little heavy foot or whether it be grief or whether it be concern or whether it be pain or whether it be anguish, oh God, I'm thankful that you are the one that provides our, your Holy Spirit to give us the comfort, the strength, and the peace that we need. So today, dear God, we lean on you. We ask that you'll speak to our hearts and lives, dear Lord, through your word. We ask that you'll encourage us through the fellowship of believers, Father, as we lift up songs to you. We ask that the manifestation, manifested presence of the Lord will be in this place, Father. That we'll leave here knowing not only we've been to church, but we've had church. And that, look, Lord, you've spoken to us and we've responded to you in obedience. We ask you to have your will in your way. We love you dearly. And we thank you for the opportunity to worship this morning. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing, Better is One Day. Is it turned on now? Is yours, Tara? If you would, if you don't mind, would you turn to Hebrews? If you don't have your Bible, maybe you have it on a phone app. But if you would turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. <clears throat> the Word of God says, Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. And when we come to church to worship, 
the Word of God says that we must worship in spirit and in truth. And so to do that, God wants your mind. That's how you would worship is in your mind. And if we draw near to God in our mind, then the Word of God says that he will draw near to you. Not maybe, but that he will. Thank you so much, ladies. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 12. Um, Genesis chapter 12. I, I've had an experience over uh, the last two weeks that I, I had never really imagined until uh, uh, a little over a year ago um, uh, when I learned of the efforts that the Mississippi Baptist Convention made to partner with missionaries in, in Southeast Asia to train church leaders there in sound theology. 
and that includes uh, surveys of the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, as well as uh, particular um, theological courses. It's just kind of like uh, uh, giving a Bible college education, if possible, to as many church leaders as we can uh, in that area. And when I found that out, I think it was the end of 14, I looked at the 2015 schedule and it, it really didn't work. I said, you know, I think February would be good. And he said, well, that's about the only month we don't send anybody. And I said, well, I don't know, I don't know that I can do it then. But, but, I, but God began to, to tug at my heart and give me a burden for it, um, for the opportunity to do something like uh, I, had, I had never done. And then, and then the first week of December, I, I got an email that said that because of some cancellations, we had an urgent need um, or either they didn't sign up, I'm not sure which, but uh, we had an urgent need that was not fulfilled, and they needed uh, two people to go and teach um, uh, January and to leave on, on January the 4th, and, um, and that it was urgent and unmet. And immediately the Lord struck my heart about that. I looked at the schedule, and um, unless Clemson happened to go to the national championship, um, <clears throat> That was about the only thing on my schedule during that time that I, uh, that I, I knew of, and there was no way that I could hold that fleece out before the Lord. I, I just couldn't do that. So, um, <laughs> so I, 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 I met with, I saw Dawn at lunch and spoke to her about it and, uh, and met with our deacons uh, either that night or the next night and, and asked them about it. And um, I've always been encouraged and supported by our deacons, but I don't think I've ever felt that as much as I did in that meeting, um, encouraging me to go, at least give me a, a one-way ticket. Um, I don't know about the other way, but, um, and, and you know, looking back on that, it may have taken one of those 24-hour hurry-up kind of decisions for me um, to, to take the plunge of sorts, but, but I sure am glad I went. Now, I, I realize that um, the sacrifices that come forth from that. Uh, I realize the sacrifices for my family. Uh, we um, uh, uh, spent Christmas here and then uh, uh, immediately left uh, after Christmas and, and traveled to South Carolina to spend Christmas with um, uh, my parents and then traveled home on Saturday and I preached on Sunday morning and on Sunday afternoon I drove to Jackson and flew out um, on nearly in the middle of the night uh, on, on Monday morning. And, and so um, it was a, a stark, uh, a quick kind of turnaround, and I, I realized the sacrifices for that with little notice and within 24 hours of returning from Christmas. I realized the sacrifices of our church. Um, I was blown away when we closed out the service on the 3rd uh, the, the, with the, the prayerful emphasis that we had. Now look at that at that, that sheet uh, in the hall and, and see the people who, who dedicated themselves to pray for me um, during that time. I believe that you made it prayerfully, feasibly, and logistically possible for me to be a part of this and to go, and I appreciate it much, and I, I, believe, I believe we'll both be better for it, quite honestly. I, I also realize the timely ministry here that I missed out on, and uh, when people struggle and when there's a loss, your pastor wants to be there for you, I promise you. It breaks my heart when I can't be, and um, I'm comforted by knowing that God called me to go. And he knew everything that would go on when I was gone, and he had prepared all the and planned all that, and I have to trust him with that, quite honestly. Um, I would have, have um, I, I can't work those things out. God has to do that. And so I learned a lot, and and I look forward to sharing that with you. I, I want to share in more detail next Sunday night, and I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons, because um, I, for one, I don't want to specifically share about the people that I met with when we are online internationally. Um, uh, they are at security risk in what they do and in the places that I went, and uh, we were put on alert about those things, and and I was moved around strategically for those purposes. And I, I want to share in those details, but I can't do it in this capacity. And I'm not prepared 
um, to, to share the pictures and the, the details and all that kind of stuff. So I know some know where I went and some don't know where I went and all that stuff, and, and, and I'm going to share all that, and it's not going to be online, and, and, um, and so I can make that available for you so, you so you can know that. And I do all that because I want to protect those who serve the Lord in those areas and not, not do anything to slow up that ministry because they've already had hindrances along the way, and I'll share some of that with you as well. This morning, I, I want to focus on the challenge that our International Mission Board missionaries are concentrating on as they serve in those areas of Southeast Asia. I had the privilege last Sunday morning of worshiping with, I believe, six International Mission Board missionaries and their families um, uh, in, and, and be, had the opportunity to, to hear them share and for me to share. And it was really neat because um, we broke up into small groups and discussed some things that, that one of them that was leading us had us share. And the group that I got with was me and three teenage sons of missionaries. And that was who was in the group. And so they were leaning on me heavy to come up with the right answers. And I was leaning on them heavy to teach me about where I was. And so we talked about that. And they had spent over half their life in this foreign land and, and um, uh, informed me and shared with me things that probably I, I learned more from those teenagers than I did any other time, quite honestly. And so it was a blessing to be a part of that. But, but before we left uh, on uh, Friday morning, uh, uh, we met together, uh, me and several missionaries and the other guys that traveled with me. And um, we, um, he shared with us, the leader shared with us, um, uh, how they concentrate on what they do. And when I heard what he said, I thought, man, that applies to us as well. And so I want to share from that um, this morning. Couldn't help but think about Genesis chapter 12. It seems like every time God's challenged me, he's used Genesis chapter 12 for me. I remember when I was looking to find where God would have me go to seminary. And I visited New Orleans almost by accident. And it was obvious that when I walked on that campus, that's where God wanted me to be. And I remember packing up my little Civic with everything that I had and driving 600 miles with my mom and daddy, thinking about I'm going to a land that, that I, don't, I ain't seen and don't have a clue about. And if I'd have known more about New Orleans, I probably wouldn't have went. <laughs> but but, but, but I, I didn't know any better. Um, same way when I, I was uh, offered the opportunity to pastor a church with no absolute experience at all and scared to death and feeling very unqualified. And um, again, uh, he showed me that. And then the next move was a, a 400-something mile move. And then the next was another 400-something mile move here. And... and um, um, you never know what you're walking into till you walk into it. And, and, but God's always been there before you and God will lead you through it. And so you just trust him with that. And so, um, um, but, but one of the, the key phrases in this passage is one that sticks out to me and always has. And, and I want to read it this morning. It's in Genesis chapter 12, beginning in verse one, it says, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I'll show you. And I'll make you a great nation, and I'll bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and him who dis dishonors you I'll curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I love you, and I thank you for the privilege that you give us this morning to spend some time in your word and spend some time in worship, dear God, and I pray that you'll show us not only what your word says, but God, I pray that you'll show us what you are saying to us as individuals, dear Father. What you are saying to us as a church, oh God. What you would have us to do, Father. I pray that you'll lead us and help us to follow as you lead, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 
The efforts of our missionaries in a restricted area of Southeast Asia has a four initiative effort. I wrote this sermon when I was sitting in a, in a, uh, an airport in Seoul, Korea, uh, yesterday, probably about the time you were going to bed. It was, it was, um, mid midday there, uh, midnight here. And, uh, and so take it for what it's worth is what I'm trying to say. But, but it was, you know, I was, I was in the middle of a long trip. The first initiative that, um, he shared with us that they emphasize is to bless. Now, I love this passage because Abraham was willing to go to a land that he did not know, to a people that he had never met, and to a culture that was unknown to him. And, and, and verse 4 tells us that when God told him to do that, it says, so Abram went. In other words, there's not a hesitation to do what, what God wanted him to do. Once he knew what God wanted him to do, then, then he went forth from that. And, and it is my hope and effort in my life and I also want it for our church, and I want it for your life, for, 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 for reasons for you, is that we will be in such a place in our lives where we hear the Word of God clearly speak to us when He has a Word for us, and that when He speaks to us, we will respond obediently no matter what it is or, or what He asks us uh, to, to do. Uh, verse 4 tells us that he went. When God told him to go, he went, just as God told him to. And because he did, God made him a blessing. Now listen, we are not only charged to be a part of what God is doing in our world, God's commissioned us to do that. It's not that he's given us the opportunity alone. He, he's given us a commission to do that. And then he's promised that he will empower us with his Holy Spirit to carry out those things that he leads us to do. He has told us to share as we go. Now, whether that means across the world or whether it means across the street, we have the responsibility to share Christ with the world. And, and when we do, he will make us a blessing. He'll bless us. And when we obediently respond to that blessing, he will make us a blessing. No greater satisfaction can come than serving the Lord and watching him work through you Sometimes in spite of you. <laughs> and if you've not found the way to be a blessing in the kingdom of God, you need to steadfastly attempt to find that spot. Because if you're a child of God, God has blessed you. He has blessed us in ways that we don't even recognize. And when he blesses you, he also gives you the opportunity to be a blessing. So the first initiative is to bless. The second one is to love. John 15 verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. When Jesus spoke those words, he, he was in the upper room preparing his disciples to, to live and to serve without his physical presence with them. The service that he spoke of was, was primarily the cross that he bore for us. And I don't want to back off of that because that is the, uh, the love that he's talking about. H however, when you, when you look at the, total te the whole testimony of Scripture, you'll see that, that we are called to be living sacrifices. The Apostle Paul tells us that in Romans 12, 1. Therefore, that we are to lay down our lives for others. Not to die for others, but to live for others. To lay down our schedules, to lay down our desires, to lay down our priorities to serve others. To leave our areas of comfort to serve the needs of those in more uncomfortable settings. Now, if you know me, you know I'm plain spoken, sometimes too much so. And, and I don't want to be this morning, but, but I'll be honest with you. When I found out what I was going and what I was going into, I did not find out many details. They do that on purpose. I did not know where I'd be when I got there. I knew where I'd fly into. I did not know where they would take us, okay? When they transported us, we changed transportation in different ways, okay? Um, and and so, that, so that if um, um, the tracking system, and the government has a tracking system, the tracking system could 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 be be broken up some. So you'd 
uh, you'd ride a, a train a certain way and then get in a car and that kind of stuff, you know, to, 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 to break up the, the travel and, and those type things. But uh, so, so we didn't know before we went exactly where we were going and we found out, we didn't find out until we were done with, with that mission what the next one would be and they told us the night before we'll pick you up at 830 and they'd take us to where we were going and that kind of thing. So I didn't have a clue, but but I did know that the culture that I was living in was a lot different than the one I'm used to. And I did know that the things that they ate were a lot different than what I normally ate. And I did know that if you ate the wrong thing, that it could ruin the trip. <laughs> and I also knew that the way you deal with that there is different than the way you deal with that here. And so I said, Lord, protect my gut. And and, and don't let me have trouble in the wrong places because it's different. I knew that the water could be unsafe to drink. Um, in most places where I laid my head at night, well, every place I laid my head at night, the water was safe, but in the places I'd been during the day, it hadn't been, so if you forget, and it'll change your week. You know, so uh, those kind of things. I, I, I did not. I did not travel seven thousand miles to lay my head in somebody else's house and struggle with strain and embarrassment to be able to carry out what I'd called to. So I asked God to protect me. And that's brutally honest, but I'll be honest with you. That's that's what I, my concern was. And God gave me people like Sister Lou. I met Sister Lou in the second week. When you have a language bearer, as strong as that language bearer, it's hard to get to know people. I had home-cooked meals, and the first week I was there, they were a little more adventurous with their meals than, than what I was used to. And, um, and so when we broke and had a couple of days, we found a pizza hut, you know, <clears throat> that'll make me sick, but I know what kind of sick that is. You know, I'll be all right. You know, they had KFC and Subway and, and pizza hut, pizza hut has a 40 page menu there. They serve steak and beef stew and all kinds of things. It's weird, but. But the pizza was almost American. And so, so we broke loose from that and said, Lord, we made it through a week. Now let's, please, Lord, let us make it through another week because we don't know. We were told uh, in the mornings and in the afternoons you'll be teaching in an area and they'll provide you your lunch and we'll transport you to the next location and then you'll teach that night. And they love to serve food too. And I went, that means there'll be no Pizza Hut, you know. There'll be no safety net there. My granola bars can only go so far. And I met Sister Lou. Sister Lou was a little lady apparently that loved to cook and was gifted at it. And the whole time she'd be, we'd be teaching, she'd be, uh, and we'd be in her home, she would be in uh, a glass, sliding glass, closed in the area, I guess, so the smell didn't inter interfere with us, and would be cooking. And she cooked uh, some of the best, most bland, thank God, bland meals that we could eat. Uh, I ate with chopsticks, and uh, I was worried about that, you know. I, I, th I forgot to pack a fork, and... and uh, and I got quite savvy on it. As a matter of fact, on the way home on the plane, when they served us rice with something, and I used my chopsticks on the way home just, just, to, just because it was easier, quite honestly, than, than, than the other. Uh, and, and so um, Sister Lou, um, as we left um, those dear people on Thursday, I told Sister Lou through my translator, you don't know how much of a godsend you were to me because she set me at ease 
about some of the things that I was concerned about. Um, I don't know what concerns you have, whether God is calling you to cross the street and speak the love of Christ to someone or whether he's calling you to cross the world. But I want to encourage you to not let it stop you from being obedient to him, but to love. The third initiative is to serve. Mark chapter 10, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. It's been recently reported, and I've shared from this pulpit, that the International Mission Board has had to cut back their missionary force. And we talked about that during the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Um, and they're cutting back the force of the missionary field about 20% uh, due to rising cost and, and failing giving. And, and that cutback affects the, the large area that I visited in a mighty way. There will be another series of cuts. The first series of cuts to that area affected 12% of their staff. They expect another cut to come soon. The one that leads that area's efforts uh, for the International Mission Board has recently been given a greater responsibility, and he now leads the effort to, to reach an area that includes 650 million people. Now, he, it was in his home that we worshiped last Sunday, and it, he is the key leader in that area, and, and, and it's an area that affects um, 650 million people. I think that's twice as many people that live in America, okay? So it's 650 million people. That is 10% of the world. When we see statistics, um, when we show those statistics at Lottie Moon Time, and you see statistics of how God is working through our missionaries, usually half of those statistics come from that 10% in the world. In other words... Approximately half the salvations and the new churches in the whole world that's being established is being established that are being established through our international missionaries are being established in this part of the world. 650 million people. We have 80 missionaries there for 650 million people. That is one for every 8 million people. Now, the city that I flew into was a small town of 8 million. And then I went to a smaller town of 3 million. In that area, over the last five years, the annual averages include a half a million presentations of the gospel. Half of these conversations, half of these are including conversations that lead to an opportunity to respond. Now, if you don't share your faith, you don't know what I mean by that, but you can speak of the Lord and speak of what he's done for you and never or, or give a gospel track and never have the opportunity to ask that person to give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Sometimes God opens the door for you to give some information, but you don't have the chance to do that. Well, half of those those there's a, half of those opportunities lead to a question of whether they will respond to the gospel or not. Okay, and you and realize that some of these people will will risk losing their family and and will risk a, a lot to 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 follow the Lord. It'll change your life in more ways than one. And half of those conversations lead to the opportunity to respond. Over the last five years, there's been an average of five to 10,000 saved each year in those areas, an average of two to 5,000 baptized in those areas, and 50 to 100 new churches or groups formed each and every year. Now, those averages vary, and I give you ranges because our faithful were seized and interrogated in 2014. The equivalent to the FBI in that nation held our missionaries overnight and questioned them. All night they were questioned. It was a long night, but God spared their ministry there. They thought they would have to leave. However, that put them on high on the radar, and their ministry outreach slowed in 2015. For instance... 
what I was intending to do was to teach a four-day course. In two of those places, I taught in three days because it's not safe to have that many people together for that long a time. So now the leader in that area does not, um, he don't like it, but, but he has to scale back his personal movement because he's on the radar. And, 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 and he has to scale back his training efforts, whereas he was training many in his own home again and again and again, young church leaders to, to our new church leaders to, to, to fulfill the responsibilities there. He now has had to, ha, had to cut loose from that because he's on the radar and now has become more of a manager to oversee the efforts for a, a huge amount of people. Now, now I, I know that all are not called to go. And, and, and of those that are, some are called to go for a short time to, to get just a glimpse and to encourage folks and to go back home and to share information about how to pray and support. I asked that leader there, I said, is, is there any special effort? Because I know enough about uh, what our missionaries do to know that besides their income, they have sometimes a small ministry budget. Uh, my buddy in England had like $1,500 a year that he could use for uh, for ministry. And so I asked him, I said, is there any special projects that you need? And my friend in England told us a few years ago, he said, I, I give out packets with the gospel, Christmas packets with candy and the gospel in it at Christmas time to my Pakistani Muslim neighbors. And if you could sponsor that, we'd appreciate that. And I said, well, how much does that cost? He said, I give out about 150 of them and it costs me a couple bucks a piece. And I said, well, I think we can handle that. Okay. So, so, let, so let us do that. So before I left Sunday morning, I said, is there anything that, that we can do back in the States in addition to giving faithfully to Lottie Moon, in addition to giving faithfully to Co-op Pro, is there anything that we can do, a special effort that maybe your budget cannot meet and that we can help out with that? And he said, yes. He said, we twice a year uh, have a Bible and track campaign of sorts. And if I can get enough of them printed, we can get a really good rate on giving out tracks that are culturally appropriate and present the gospel. And he said, and I can get about uh, 60 made for a dollar and I need about a half a million. And he said, if we can get a half a million made um, every six months, we can uh, they'll use them, and they'll get it out. And, and, and so um, we can do the math on that and figure out how to do that. I think it would be a wonderful Valentine campaign. Uh, how greater to share the love of Christ than to give somebody the gospel. And so, and, and so I, I haven't done the math yet, and we'll, we'll work on some of that and try to be a part of that. Um, he has churches that partner with him in that area, and I'm thankful for that. I'd love to team up and, and, and hope that we can be a part of that. But to under you know to, to, to help to help along the way for instance however i want you to understand the investment that these these missionaries give when a missionary goes to the field in that area it takes a full six years for that missionary to properly learn the language because it's difficult to learn the landscape to learn the culture to be able to serve in a capacity of more than just an apprentice, they have to be on board for six years. That's a commitment to serve the Lord, no matter what it costs. If somebody were to go over there for four years as serving as an apprentice or as a help, that'd be wonderful, but they would never be able to do what needs to be done to serve a particular area and to oversee that area. Can you imagine that kind of sacrifice? To leave your world as you know it and begin preparation of language study and understanding only to get there and serve in an apprentice role for six years? That's service, folks. And the Lord came to serve. You know, his favorite title for himself, you've heard me say it many times, was the Son of Man, which is the servant of humanity. I mean, the disciples served in that kind of apprentice role for three years, and God established in them the, the burden and 
empower them with the Holy Spirit to, to go out and carry out uh, what he had started. Uh, serving the Lord is not about having status. It's not about having somebody pat you on the back. It's not about moving up the ladder. It's about serving as Jesus served. And we are challenged to do the same right here and right now. We're to serve. And then lastly, we're to push. My partner over the last two weeks was a man named Glenn Jackson. Glenn Jackson served in Mississippi for many years. He is presently the Associational Missions Director of Neshoba County and is over those 39 Baptist churches in that area. And we were discussing this bless, love, serve, and push concept. And he said the thing that we need to learn the most, and I'll say this and I'll close. The thing that we need to understand the most is this push concept. Because the reality is we want convenient ministry. We drop a dollar in a bucket or spend 30 minutes doing something. That's convenient ministry. That's easy ministry. We like that. We we want to serve God if it doesn't affect our schedule. We want to serve God if it does not drastically affect our pocketbook or does not play into our comfort. But when I look in Scripture and I see the examples that God set before us, that's not what I see. Because when Jesus looked at Peter and his brother Andrew and said, follow me, I'll change you from being fishermen to being fishers of men, they left their boats and their nets and followed him. That means they locked the office door and left. When James and John was with their dad, Zebedee, in the family's business boat and and, and Jesus spoke to them. They left the family business and their father, and they followed the Lord. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and following, it tells us that the first church of Jerusalem was so dynamic in changing the world because they were so faithful to come to church. That's what it says in Acts 2, 42. They were so faithful to come to church. They were so faithful to give to God's, to God's work and to give to those in need and so devoted to the fellowship of the church that God empowered them and did mighty things through them. Those that pushed themselves to a greater extreme than they thought they could are those that are used by God to make a difference in the lives of so very many and 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 so how does the work of an asian country across the world affect us i like what a missionary said on sunday morning he said when i first went i had the idea that the church had sent me to this location and then i realized no god sent the church and i'm just a part of that I'm here this morning a little jet lagged and a little weary to tell you I think we have to be a part of spreading the gospel to the world. I know I have to be a part of it. I think you have to be a part of it. I think we have to be a part of it and and a greater part of that than we've ever been before because honestly we are blessed beyond measure. I saw people over the last couple of weeks that have a lot of money I, I, I spent Thanksgiving walking, th- Black Friday, walking down Madison Avenue in New York City. And I'll tell you, I went to a mall over the weekend that put Madison Avenue to shame. It was amazing. But I spent my days with people who wore the same clothes every day. They were clean. They didn't stink. But they put on the same thing. Because they didn't have the other. Plus it was 10 degrees outside. We're blessed beyond measure, folks. So let us bless others by being the blessing that God has allowed us to be. What, how God has blessed us, let us bless others. We, we love each other and the work of God. Let's see a greater love and lay down our lives for him. And I'm not talking about dying for him. I'm talking about living for him. I mean, and let, let's serve. Let, let's serve not to be served by, back by others, not with a mutual service and not for recognition, but to serve for our dear love for the Lord, to, to love God and therefore love others, to push ourselves, to push harder than we ever have, to be all that God would have us to be.
And I think we can do that as corporately as a body of Christ. I think we can help each other to do that, to, to reach greater heights than we've ever reached before as we allow God to work in our lives. But I also think that comes down to personal decisions in your own life, personal decisions to allow God to remove your hindrances today. And so my prayer for you and my prayer for me and my prayer for us is, Lord, will you remove my hindrances today? Lord, I repent of my actions and my attitudes and my apathy that keep me from being everything that I can be for you. Whether it's my personal behavior that comes in the way of me being everything that I can be for you. Whether it's my personal mindset that limits me from giving my all in service for you. Whether it be when I look at my limited capacity and realize that I can't do so many things and I fail to see your capacity that through the power of God can enable me to do whatever you'd have me to do. May God remove our hindrances today. May he help us repent of our actions and our attitudes and our apathy. Because I'll tell you, I believe the church of Jesus Christ in America is suffering due to their apathy. We're comfortable, folks. I mean, there's a lot we don't like about the world, but we're comfortable. And when we obey God, I truly believe that he'll stretch us to get out of our comfort zone. You don't have to travel 7,000 miles to get out of your comfort zone. I'm not asking everybody to do that. I may never go back. I may go back next year. I don't know. But that's beside the point. The point is that God's planted us here and has told us to not let our actions, our attitudes, or our apathy get in the way of whatever he wants to do in our lives. Now, I don't know how that is customized and individualized and personalized for you, but I trust the Holy Spirit has shown you that. Or will in the next week. Let's pray together. Lord, I love you, and I thank you, dear God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for your call. I thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for your call upon us. I thank you, Lord, for your, your clarity of direction, Father. And I pray that we'll respond as you tell us to respond, whether that be publicly or privately or whatever, oh God. I pray that, Lord, any actions that are in my life or any attitudes or any apathy that's in my life lord that you will show those things to me that i'll repent of those things and be everything that i need to be for you and god i pray the same for every individual in this place lord i pray the same for first baptist church that you'll never let us be comfortable with giving you our second best but that god will realize that you've given us everything that we have every everything that we could be and that, Father, you deserve our very best. So lead us in that way right now, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen. Stand together, if you will, as we sing, obey God, as he speaks to your heart and life. Jesus is tenderly calling the home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love with the world farther and farther away calling today calling today Jesus is calling is tenderly calling today Jesus is calling the weary to rest Calling today, calling today, bring him thy burden and thou shalt be blessed. He will not turn thee away. Calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today.
offertory hymn this morning is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Let's sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. George Powell is going to come down and lead us in an offertory prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we just thank you for the testimony that we've heard this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that we have here in this country and the blessings that we have. Lord, may they not be a hindrance to us doing what you call us to do. Lord, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for the uh, people of this church and what they mean to me. Lord, I just pray that you will bless the tithe, bless the giver. In Christ's name, amen. Across the way, I want to encourage you to be back tonight. Um, let's worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you, dear Father, for the privilege that you give us to get in on what you're doing. I pray, Lord, that we won't be reluctant to follow as you lead. Lead us today, Father. In Jesus' precious name, all God's people said, Amen. Let's sing. I'm so glad. 